the artist, we're starting our perspective unit today. I'm going to first make sure that my paper is horizontal, which is the wide way. And then I'm going to make a dot somewhere in the middle-ish area of my paper. And you want to make it above the halfway point as well. That's going to be my vanishing point. Next, I'm going to take my ruler. And I'm just going to line it up as evenly as possible. And I am going to make a line going across. Now that is my horizon line. I'm actually going to make mine a little bit darker. I want you to keep yours about that light though. I'm only making mine darker so that you can see it on the screen. There we go. Next up, I'm going to go over to the right side and I am going to draw kind of a vertical-ish rectangle. It doesn't have to be perfect. You can see actually I'm just hand drawing mine. You are welcome to do this with your ruler if you would like. Now you do want to make sure that part of your rectangle is above that horizon line and part of it is below. And you don't really want to make it even. I would make a good chunk above and a good chunk below. That's just going to make it easier on you. Now we are starting off our perspective unit with some hollow forms because I think that is a really fun, easy way to start it off. Notice I am lining my ruler up with the corner of my rectangle and my vanishing point. And I'm going to go ahead and make a line right there. I'm going to continue to do that with all four corners of my rectangle. Lining that ruler up with the corner of the rectangle and drawing that line straight to the vanishing point. So right now, this looks like a cool little hologram, but you can see perspective. You can see that this part is closer to us, and you can see our lines kind of receding back all the way to that vanishing point. One thing also about that horizon line, guys, think about the horizon line is equal to eye level. I'm going to go down to the bottom part of my paper, and I'm going to go ahead and make, you could do a square or a rectangle shape down here doesn't have to be just like mine, but you do want it in the bottom part of your paper. So I'm going to do the same thing that I did with this rectangle right here. I'm going to line my ruler up with the corner, going back to that vanishing point, and draw that line. Again, guys, I'm making my lines pretty dark. That's just so that you can see it on the screen. You want to draw your lines really, really light because you are going to be getting very friendly with that eraser today. So now I've got two rectangles. Now, if you look at this one, you can kind of visualize it's like you're looking down at it. This part is bigger right here. Those lines are converging. It's going farther and farther away from us as it gets closer to that little vanishing point. I'm going to have some fun. I'm going to go over here, and I am going to do a capital E. Now, can you make another letter? Of course. I just think the capital E is an easy one to work with. A capital F would be easy. A capital T would be an easy one, too. But if you want to follow along, then just go ahead and do the capital E. You're going to have the opportunity to be very creative with perspective soon. Now, I'm going to do the same exact thing with the E that I've done with both rectangles, except for it's just got a few more steps now because I've got a lot more corners in this E. So I'm lining that ruler up with each corner and drawing that line to the vanishing point. This one almost looks like it's going to kind of overlap right there. There you go. And that's okay. Some of them, some lines might kind of go over each other. Okay. Now I've got my E done, and you can see every little corner has those lines going back. So it almost like, looks like a cool little spotlight coming up. Speaking of spotlights, I'm going to go up here, and I am going to draw a circle. does not have to be perfect. That's kind of more of an oval, and that is absolutely fine. Now on the circles or the curved shapes, you're basically going to do the same thing that you've done with all of these shapes, but now it's a little bit of a curveball, haha, <laughs> literally, because it doesn't have an exact corner for you to take your ruler to. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to line up my vanishing point with the widest part of that circle. So this is the widest part right here. It's not right there. It's not right there. The widest part from that vanishing point, if I'm looking out at that circle from that vanishing point is right there, and I'm going to do a line right there. Same thing right here. 
I'm going to take my vanishing point and line that ruler up to the widest part. So that's going to be out here. And I'm going to do a line right there. So think about like an ice cream cone. I mean, you wouldn't do the outside line of an ice cream cone right there. It would be on the furthest point, okay? So that almost looks like a little spotlight coming up. Pretty awesome. Now, let's play with turning our holograms into solid shapes. Since I'm looking out at this little rectangle right here, I've got some, look at, some parts above the horizon line, some parts below. I want to turn this into a solid block. So I'm going to do a line right here, a vertical line that's parallel to this edge of my rectangle, like so. This vertical line is not going to change angles. It is going to stay vertical. Now the change, though, is that this vertical line is shorter than this vertical line. And if you think about perspective, it's as if this block is receding away from us. And so this line does not change. Now I'm going to take my eraser. Like I said, you're going to be getting very friendly with your eraser today. And I'm going to erase out the lines that are in the center of the side of that little rectangle block right there. So you can see how all of a sudden that's looking more like a solid line. Now, to make this look a little bit more like a solid block, I'm going to go over here and erase out my lines. If I accidentally erase too much, I can always just redraw. For example, I've erased out some of that vertical line right there, so I'm just going to add that back in. Whoop, easy peasy. Now, you could just leave those lines as they are, but if you wanted to erase them out, you certainly could. Now, right here, you do not want to erase out your horizon line, though. So now you can see that we, it looks like we've got this solid rectangle block, and it looks like it's receding back in space. That is awesome. I'm going to do the same thing down here, but it's going to be a little bit different because we're looking down at this. So the side of this rectangle that is going back is going to be the top side. So this horizontal line right here, I'm going to repeat it, but I'm going to repeat it just up here. And this horizontal line is going to be just a little bit shorter because it's going back. It's further away from us, so it's a little bit shorter or smaller. I could go ahead and I could erase out these two lines right here. So now you can see it looks like I've got this solid side right there. Now, if I wanted to look like this was a piece of paper that was just bent and curved around, I could leave it like that, and that would look pretty awesome. However, I'm going to do something a little bit different with you in a few minutes with this. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to erase out these little lines right here. So right now, it looks like just a solid block. Now let's go over to our E. Our E is going to be a little bit more challenging to make this into a solid block E, but it can be done. I'm going to start out, and I'm just going to erase any lines that are in the center of the face of that E. When I say the face of that E, it's the part that's facing us. Now, this looks pretty cool as is. You could actually leave yours like this if you want to, but if you want to challenge yourself for that block E, think about this. You're going to be doing lines parallel to the face or the body of the E. So right here, I'm going to slide my pencil up, and I'm going to do a line that's parallel to this one right here. Then once I hit that perspective line, I've got to change directions. So I'm looking right here. I've got to do a line that's parallel, or copycats, this line right there. Now, I've hit this line right here. That's not perfect. That's okay. Hit this line right here. I've got to change my direction since I hit that perspective line, and I'm going to do a line that's parallel right there. Now, this other little line right here that would have gone through our E is hidden, so I'm not going to worry about that one. I'm going to go right here, start my line, and I'm doing a parallel line to that one. Now, this one is tricky because I've hit that perspective line, so I need to change my direction. And this is going to be an ever so slightly visible line right there. Whoop. All right. Now I'm going to come over here once again. Now this is my horizon line, so although I've stopped with my other lines and changed directions, my horizon line is not going to impact that. So I'm going to go all the way up here. Then I've hit that line. I need to change direction. Doing a parallel line out here. Whoop. And then I hit this line, need to change direction, and there we go, right there. So now all of a sudden, you can see that I've got that block E. 
Now my extra little lines that might be in the center, I could go ahead and erase out, including that horizon line that is going through that E. I could even, if I wanted to, erase out all the extra perspective lines going back towards that vanishing point. Okay, this part is fun. Oh man, is it fun. I am going to draw into the little face of this rectangle, another little rectangle like this. We're gonna make a hollow cube rectangle right here. So there we go. Now I want this little cube to be, I want it to kind of be a little, uh, it's hollow, but it's also got some definition in there. So I'm actually going to take my ruler from the corner of this little smaller rectangle and I am going to draw my line going up. Now I know I'm gonna have to erase on top of this solid part anyway, so I might just skip my pencil over that. If that doesn't make sense, you could draw it through there and erase later too. Again, same thing right here. I'm gonna line my ruler up with this little bottom corner right here, draw my line up. I'm gonna hop over this part with my pencil and go straight back. Now the next thing, I'm going to give it, let's see, this is about this distance. I'm gonna give a line going straight across right here. So I'm doing a line that's parallel with this bottom line and then a line going up like so. So straight across parallel and then I hit that perspective line, gotta change direction, doing a line up that's parallel. I could go ahead and erase out that little part right there. Whoop. So now I've shaded the inside of that little hollow cube so you can almost see how it's like you're looking through it. Pretty, pretty awesome. Now if I feel like, ooh, I'm looking down, I think this might be a little bit more narrow. I could always actually change the depth of this on top too. So I might bring that line in just a bit. That's gonna make me feel a little bit better. Whoop. And then I could, of course, leave those perspective lines right here if I wanted to, or I could just go ahead and erase it. If you would like, we could turn this little cone-looking shape right here into a cylinder. So I would skip a little space, and I'm gonna do a line that's actually a parallel curve to the bottom part of that circle right there, or oval, just like that. Now this is a very simple step, all I have to do at this time is erase out the rest of those little perspective lines going towards the vanishing point, and there we go. And I've got a very easy peasy little cylinder right there. Now you can see this would be easy to turn that into a can of soup or a Coke can or something like that. It'd be pretty cool. Thanks for listening, guys.